Thank you so much for welcoming here. And um, I'm very touched, honestly, to, to be watching the ceremony. I think that it is still underappreciated how much work goes into publishing a book from the very first idea and until it appears as a, as a product, right, as what you see and what you can touch. And so to have an organization such as this one, it's, it's incredibly valuable, you know. So we all need to support more initiatives like this one. They are incredibly deserving. And thank you everyone who has contributed and will contribute in the future to having organizations such as this one. Like Iroida said earlier, Stanislav already said everything I could have possibly said about this book. So what, what remains for me is perhaps to um, say a few words at the end, but in the middle to let the book speak for itself. I don't know how many of you had, have had the chance to read the book. It's incredibly powerful. It's difficult, but it's also uplifting. And I encourage every one of you to pick up a copy. I know that there will be some copies available as well, but also to encourage your friends and family, your colleagues, to read about it. It ends on a positive note, like, uh, like the jury member said, that um, you can remain a human being even after going through incredibly difficult dehumanizing experiences. And so, let me just read a short excerpt from the book for you. <clears throat> this is uh, at the very end of the book when Stanislav already is released after 28 months of being held in the, in the Izolatia torture camp. I remember going down to the Kyiv metro for the first time a week after being freed. I fell into shock. And not just because I had stepped into an endless current of people after more than two years in a small cell where I saw only the same few men month after month. Yes, merely seeing young women smiling and carefree was an event in itself. When I boarded the train, I think I experienced what the Buddhists call satori, an awakening, but in reverse. I stood by the door and noticed a young woman beside me scrolling on her phone through pages of baby clothes. I studied her face, her vague smile, how carefree it was, and then I looked around the car and I lost my will to live. I realized in a flash that my experience wasn't known to anyone else. And what's more, was useless. No one wants to live with torture and the basements. People have babies to clothe. I suddenly felt as though years of screaming and pain were stretching into one giant smirk that was that metro car. The feeling lasted until a military serviceman got on. When I saw him, a young guy in a camo uniform whom I had never met, the rest of the car turned black and white and he alone remained colorful. He became my only link to this still alien city for the sole reason that he was dressed in camouflage. I want to thank the translators who really deserve uh, proper applause for their work on this, on this, on this translation, Zenia Tompkins and Nina Murray. Uh, I would like to also mention uh, Mikhailo Hluboki from the Izolatia Foundation for the Arts. They have provided uh, several, well, 35 to be precise, illustrations that we include in the book, including maps, photographs of the, of the area, including the torture camps and the, the torture cells and the torture equipment. Um, earlier today, uh, Marco Andrejcik has mentioned the uh, cover of uh, the, the other book that we published, Mondegreen by Valdemar Afienko, and he pointed to that mayor's head that was depicted, that is depicted on the cover. Um, I would like to mention the designer who, who helped produce us that book because it's also connected to, to how we live these days. Um, the designer, the author of that artwork is um, our friend and colleague, poet, as well as designer, Mikola Leonovich. Uh, the mayor's hat that you see on the cover is actually himself. Uh, he kind of cr created it out of papier mache and then he took several photographs putting that big head on, his, on himself and then taking many photographs of that. Uh, similarly, for Oksana Kisa's book, um, Survival is Victory, Ukrainian Women in the Gulag, he ended up photographing his wife and his mother holding hands to show that idea of female solidarity that Ukrainian women experienced in the camps. 
Um, and that just shows what kind of a person he is. Unfortunately, uh, he was drafted into the Ukrainian army at the end of the year, and after um, receiving two months of basic training, he was sent to the front lines, and he is missing as of today since late April. And he has, of course, a young wife and two small kids. Um, and so I would like to end with an appeal to all of us to do whatever we can so that he can come home soon, hopefully alive, hopefully unharmed, and so that no one else has to experience that. Because this is what this book is truly about, about the human beings that we need to protect. Thank you so much. Thank you.